Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp and Corumba Fungicides and Pride Seeds. Hey, Kara Oosteros here with realagriculture.com. I am here today with Dr. Gabir Dillon, with, uh, who's a research scientist with Farming Smarter, and we are here for a corn school episode. So recently you have done some research on dryland corn. Can you tell me a bit about that? Uh, yes, uh, so Farming Smarter did uh, some research, a three-year trial on um, uh, green corn production here under the climatic conditions of South Alberta. Uh, so we basically uh, were looking, evaluating uh, how the agronomic practices uh, that are generally followed for green corn production translate uh, into the climatic conditions here in South Alberta. Uh, we did it, the trials at four locations. It was here in Lethbridge, uh, Vauxhall, Bow Island and Medicine Hat. Uh, it was from 2015 to 17 uh, and we looked at the effect of different practices like population, plant population, row spacing, nitrogen fertilization, tillage, crop sequence, all of these things. So for row spacing and seeding rate, what were some of the things you found? Uh, well, we found that the narrow row spacings, we compared uh, 20 inch and 30 inch row spacings. Uh, we found that the narrow row spacings were better for actually for all of the seed rates. We found about a 9 to 10 percent yield increase with the, for the narrow row spacing compared to the wider row spacing. With the plant population, generally, if we increase the seed rate, the yield went up uh, with the exception of the highest seed rate, which was about 35,000. Uh, so the optimum seed rate uh, was about 30,000 uh, seeds per acre uh, with the so spacing of 20 inches for these conditions. And as far as fertilizer goes, you did some tests with nitrogen as well. Can you tell me a bit about what, you're, what you found there? Uh, we didn't find a strong response of corn to nitrogen. Uh, we tried a bunch of different weights ranging from zero to about 190 pounds per acre. We also tried a split application in which some of the nitrogen was applied uh, at seeding. Uh, it was uh, side banded at seeding and the rest was applied in crop. Uh, we did not find a great deal of difference between uh, of in yield uh, between the different rates. Uh, maybe due to the moisture that is limiting in the dryland conditions here. Uh, but we did find that somewhere between 50 to 200 pounds of nitrogen in the soil is optimum for green corn production here. Okay, so you also did some work with uh, your tillage, like doing conventional versus no-till, as well mm -hmm. as having different crop residues below. Yeah. So what did you learn that way? Well, uh, the, the, the initial emergence of corn was much better with the conventional tillage systems. It was almost uh, perfect. It was almost close to 99%. Uh, with the zero tillage, the emergence was actually low. Uh, it was close to 83% on average, and it was really variable. Uh, variable within a crop residue, for like for a same crop residue, and also between different crop residues. Uh, however, when we looked at the yield, uh, the differences in emergence did not really affect the yield as much. Uh, the yield was almost similar, almost the same between the two crop systems. It was actually a little bit higher for the zero tillage, which may be because the zero till helps in conserving moisture, which is really important in the dryland conditions here. Um, the previous crop residues uh, predictably did not affect uh, in, the, in the conventional tillage. Uh, they did have an effect in the zero tillage, uh, especially the canola and mustard crops, which do not host the mycorrhizal fungi. They hurt the yield with corn. Um, so it's important to consider what crop sequence uh, to be used if we are using the no system here. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add about your research? Uh, well, um, I think these were the major findings from, these project, from this project. We are uh, continuing further uh, looking at uh, split uh, tillage and zero tillage, comparing that and also the different varieties with different corn heat units, uh, different seeding times. The study is ongoing and it's a three-year study, so we uh, will soon have those results. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.